In this video, we're going to learn how to construct perpendicular lines. So there's going to be two different scenarios we're going to talk about. One of them is you're going to construct a perpendicular line to a given line, and it's going to have to pass through a point on the line. So if you look at this first picture here, you're trying to find a, per a line that's perpendicular to line L that has to pass through point P. Now, any time that we're going to do a perpendicular construction, we're going to use the perpendicular bisector construction to do that. So, if you think about the perpendicular bisector construction, you start at your endpoints, you go more than halfway, and you do your two arcs. For this, I can't, if I go more than halfway, or if I start with the endpoints of this, and I go more than halfway and do my arcs, point P won't be on the perpendicular bisector unless it's in the middle of the segment that I'm working with. So what I have to do first is I actually have to force point P, the, point P to be the midpoint. And if I do that, then it'll definitely be on the perpendicular bisector. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your compass and you're going to go a certain distance away. So really the distance doesn't matter. Usually what I do is I pick one of the endpoints. Uh, it doesn't have to be, but it, really what you have to make sure you're doing is you pick a distance and then you're going to mark that side and then you're going to mark this side over here. And now what you've just done is if you kind of just ignore this section over here, so it's almost just like ignoring that, and only looking at these as my endpoints, point P is the midpoint now. So I've just created a new segment where point P is the midpoint. So now if I do the perpendicular bisector construction using the segment that I'm left with, so using, let me just highlight it, using this highlighted segment, if I just do the perpendicular bisector of that, since P is in the middle, it's equidistant from both those endpoints, uh, my perpendicular line will pass through that point. So what you do is you force point P to become the midpoint so that it's on the perpendicular bisector. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to place my compass um, so that I have the metal point, and then I'm going to go more than halfway. And I'm going to go ahead and do the perpendicular bisector construction. Remember that more than halfway distance is just an approximate. It doesn't have to be exact. The most important part, though, is that you're keeping that distance the same so that you're going equidistant from both those endpoints. And now I go ahead and I draw my arcs and take my straight edge, connect through those two intersection points. And now you can see that the line that I've constructed is the perpendicular bisector of this yellow segment, but if you look at what the question said, construct a line perpendicular to line L, well it's perpendicular to line L, and it's passing through point P. And the reason why it passes through point P is because I force point P to be the midpoint. So I can go ahead and I can put my four right angles in, and I'm going to just draw lines on there because it's a, or arrows on my line because it goes on forever. So that's my line that's perpendicular to this given line. So when I go to do this next one, Instead of scribbling out the original um, line, I'm not going to do that because typically you don't do that. I just wanted to show you um, that we're really finding the perpendicular bisector of this section. Um, so typically what we're going to do, so let me go ahead and show you one more. So this is the same idea. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my compass. And again, I'm going to measure that distance to one of the endpoints or really just pick a distance that's convenient to use. So nothing too small, nothing too big. Um, and I usually just use one of the endpoints of this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark my arc and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Because remember, the first step is forcing that point to be the midpoint. So now if X is the midpoint, it's going to be the midpoint of this segment right here that I've just created by using the equal distance. And remember, it doesn't have to be using this point. You can use um, any distance when you start with your metal point on X. And then from there, once I have my new segment, so from endpoint to endpoint, I'm going to go ahead and do the perpendicular bisector construction. So I'm going to take my compass. I'm going to go more than halfway. I'm going to draw my arc above and below. Go over to the other side. And again, using the metal point, doing the perpendicular bisector construction using those um, endpoints. And now what I have is I can go ahead and connect these. And let me just shift that over a little bit. 
So here's my line that's perpendicular to the given line. And it's passing through the point. So again, I did this by forcing um, x to become the midpoint and then just using the perpendicular bisector. So um, that's kind of your key idea for this kind of construction. Force the point to become the midpoint and then use the perpendicular bisector construction. So let's go ahead and try another scenario when the given point is not on the line. So we're going to kind of approach this the same way because in the end I need a line that's going to be um, perpendicular to this given line and passing through the, this given point, but this time the given point's not on the line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it the same way where I need to make P so that it's on the perpendicular bisector. So remember, we keep saying this, but the reason why we keep saying this is because now it really becomes important. The perpendicular bisector is a set of all points equidistant from two given points. So if I want point P to be on my perpendicular bisector, I have to make it equidistant from the endpoints. So what I do is I take my compass, I place the metal point on P, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my opening so that it's, it's going to go past this line. But what I need to do is I need to make sure that it's going to intersect that line twice. So see how I'm kind of checking right now to see is it going to intersect that line twice. The other option is you actually measure, kind of like what we did before, measure from point P to the end point, And then just um, go ahead and make an arc on the other side. So that's an option as well. So I need it to intersect this line twice. So you can make a full arc or you can just make two, you know, you can continue your arc or just make two individual arcs, doesn't really matter. So what I'm doing right now is I've just created these two intersection points. And just like before, these two intersection points, so these points right here, are equidistant from point P. That distance is the same. So what that means is if I do the perpendicular bisector of this segment right here, point P will be forced to be on that perpendicular bisector because point P is equidistant from those two points that I've just created. So now that I've gone equidistant from point P, I force it to be on the perpendicular bisector, I can go back to my yellow segment here. Again, you could scribble out this piece if you wanted. But really what I'm looking at is taking my compass, going more than halfway, and I'm going to do the perpendicular bisector of this yellow um, segment. Now notice some of you when you're doing this, you might actually see that your intersection is going to be at point P. That can happen. It doesn't have to happen though. So just be aware of that. So then I'm going to go ahead and continue my arc. And like I said, some of your intersections might, like this intersection might be below point P. Some of yours might be above point P. Some of you might have it on point P. It all just depends on that distance you pick. But remember, the distance just has to be more than halfway, and then you're set. So from here, all I need to do now is take my straight edge and draw through those intersection points. And you can see that the line that I've created now passes through point P, and it's perpendicular to the given line. So again, what I did was I forced point P to be on the perpendicular bisector by finding two points that are equidistant from it. And then from there, do the perpendicular bisector of the new segment. So that's exactly what we're going to do down here. So let's just try one more just to get the hang of it. So here's my point X. Let me get my compass. So point X is not on the line. So what I'm going to do to start, again, is place the metal point on X, and we have to go equidistant from X. Now, again, you can decide if you want to go to one of the endpoints. Um, maybe that's easier because then you'll know that it's going to intersect twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an arc here where it intersects, keeping that distance the same, make an arc on the other side. So those two arcs represent on the points that are equidistant from point X. So now I can go ahead and mark those as endpoints. So my new segment that I'm looking at is the segment between those two purple endpoints. Now if I go more than halfway between that segment, so let's say I go in here more than halfway, 
and then go to the other endpoint, keeping that distance the same. And what you're going to see is I've just created the perpendicular bisector of the segment between those two endpoints, which will force point X to be on that perpendicular bisector because um, X is equidistant from the endpoints. Remember, the perpendicular bisector is a set of every point that's equidistant from those. So that's what I've just done. So let me go ahead and get my arrows on there. I can label my perpendicular. And you can label like the bisected parts, which would be from this endpoint to here and the endpoint to there. But for this construction, all we want is the perpendicular. So I'm not going to worry about labeling the bisected piece. So remember, the key idea for both of these really is the first step is whatever the point is you're starting with, make it equidistant or make new endpoints that are equidistant from that point. So if the point's not on the line, then that means you need to find two arcs or two endpoints that are equidistant from that point. And if the point is on the line, like you saw on the previous page, well, then you force it to be the midpoint. And really, you're finding two new endpoints that are equidistant. And then once you get your new endpoints, then you just do the perpendicular bisector construction using those points. So that's really the process. Those are your two big key ideas is... Um, the process I just talked about between the point being on the line and not on the line. So go ahead, get your key ideas down, and then do your check your, your understanding problems. And then we will talk about those tomorrow.